A big thank you to SE Electronics for sending the SE2200 my way by request. I asked for it, they sent it, so thank you for that. They made this video possible. The SE2200 was just released in November 2017. There's a bunch of different model names that are similar. This is the one that's brand new as of early 2018, okay? It's a classy looking microphone. It has a pop filter accessory. It has a shock mount accessory that comes with it, but what does it sound like? We're gonna find out right now. I thought that the drums sounded really good. Now bear in mind, my drums are bad quality. They really are. So what the SC2200 recorded is what the drums really sound like. Now my crash cymbals are better quality and that's really where I could hear how good this worked. Plus I'm recording in Studio A, which is an attic. And you know, an attic's not gonna give you too much room reverb, obviously. On drums, the SE2200 did a fantastic job and I would have no problem recommending it for either drum overheads or drum room mics. Next up, let's take a listen to it on electric guitar. If you're thinking, Adam, WTF is all that noise? Well, the guitar player brought over one of those electric guitars that has built-in digital sound effects and, well, let's just say it's broken. And all that built-in electronics caused so much interference and that was the result. So I will play the noise reduced copies for you. However, bear in mind that a lot of presence, a lot of high-end detail, a lot of detail in general has just been eliminated with noise reduction. So it's really not a fair test. And I'll just say that based on what I heard, if you could eliminate that noise, but retain the frequencies, again, the SE2200 did a great job capturing what was there. Alright, let's listen to what acoustic guitar sounds like. Oh, you said you like this one. Inside. 
pack them up your moth They'll be gone all night So I thought it sounded really good on the finger-picked acoustic guitar, which was the same one that I used when I was picking with it. And um, the picking just, it had, the transients were too hard. It was too harsh. So I can't recommend it. If, if your guitar is too bright, don't use this mic. But if you have a more mellow sounding guitar or finger picking, it's a good choice. So the samples that we've all been waiting for. Vocals. How does this thing sound with the human voice? Well, unfortunately, I couldn't find a female vocalist. That's one reason besides I was trying to get a drummer who had a nicer drum set than me, which really isn't that hard to find, but for whatever reason, anyway, I couldn't coordinate th plans with everybody. So, no female vocalist, however, no adult female vocalist, however, this is what we got for you. I'll be the actor star in your bad dream land. Just nobody and nobody trust me. I'll be the actor star in your bad dreams. Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Look what you just made me do. Look what you just made me do. I'm sorry, Otara can't come to the room right now. Why? Because she's dead. I don't really care about what they say. I'll come back like a boomerang. I let their haters get their way. I'll come back like a boomerang. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Walk on my walk. Up, moves on, on. I see I, yes, see I. Just the type of catches as you can. Hey, catches as you can. Those songs sound like hits to me. Somebody better sign that little girl up before Warner Brothers picks her up and she becomes the next Mariah Carey. <laughs> Seriously though, here's the rest of the vocal samples. We have rap vocals and then I did a voiceover and uh, I'll come back after that. Would you run laps? Maybe perhaps save a child, wrap the baby up in burlap. Heard about your hustle. Try a different hustle from the streets. Maybe tighten up your calf muscles standing next to me. Brain thinking cleverly. Open sesame. I know about telepathy. Make a wish. Now cry baby wants the gift. Violate a perpetrator while I appear from the mist. Feel a shift. The sun rotated this. Glow located this. So there's no shame in this. Reach the four corners. Play connect the dots. I ate the apricots. I asked God to bless the spot. Would you run laps? Maybe perhaps save a child, wrap the baby up in burlap, heard about your hustle. Try a different hustle from the streets, maybe tighten up your calf muscles, standing next to me, brain thinking cleverly. Oh. Okay, so I'm standing about a foot away from the SE2200, and this time I'm using the M Audio Fast Track Ultra preamp, which is based on their Octane preamps. And I know that it does sound definitely less bright than the audience. So I wanted to see how good it sounds, how good this microphone sounds from about 10 inches away and with a different preamp. Because it might sound better. You know, it just it might just need that muddier preamp because the audience definitely is not muddy. Okay, so this 
looks good. The, the green light is going on anytime I'm talking right now, so it should be a good level. If I just talk a little bit louder, it'll be, it'll be good. So this is the SC2200. It is at mouth height, aimed directly at my mouth. And I'm going to check the sibilance right now. And what I'm doing is, I already said it before, but I'll say it again. I am coupling it with the Fast Track Ultra preamp, which is based on their Octane, their better Octane preamps. So I'm hoping that coupling this with a muddier sounding preamp will sound better than with the Audi 9014 preamp. Okay, so right now the microphone is pointed down, so it's going to hopefully pick up more of my chest at this angle. So it's kind of like a boom mic, actually. And what I want to hear, well, of course, it could be picking up reflections from the uh, stand. So actually, let me do this. And now I just need to angle it like that. Okay. <laughs> Well, that'll be a good test for the shock mount. All right. Well, here I am. It's angled where... I'll just keep it this way. Check one, two. And it's more towards my chest, although my nose is right here. So it's about eight inches away, I guess. But I'm, I'm talking towards the boom arm. They are definitely muddier than the ID-14. So I'm thinking that the preamp coupled with this should theoretically sound better. S sibilance. Sibilance. That'll be the true test, I guess. Puh, puh, puh. Personification. Please. Buh, buh, buh. That's the pop test, since it doesn't have a windscreen on it. Anyway, that should be good, guys. Again, this is the tw SE Electronics 2200 the SE2200 that just came out in November 2017. I love the SE2200. It is an absolute workhorse. I'd agree. Oh, I should mention. So, you guys see the pop filter right here? I wish this would stop. So, but all right, I'll talk about the I'll talk about the screw. So the screw I like it when it works. The thing is my fingers tend to get like slippery and it's not always easy to twist. For the most part, it's good, but I don't know. Maybe the material, if they could somehow make it more grippy, that would, that would help. Also, the pop filter. Make sure that the SE logo is facing outward. I tried sticking it in with the logo facing the other way and oops. It wouldn't go in, and I was trying to force it, and luckily I didn't try to force it too hard. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so let's see. Classic sound by any standards. It is the latest version of the award-winning cardioid condenser microphone that put SE Electronics on the map many years ago with its smooth, polished sound for vocals, voiceover, and numerous instrumental applications. Okay, this is where I'm going to disagree with the marketing literature right off the bat, and that is smooth. I would not characterize this as smooth for vocals or voiceovers. I want to, but I can't. It's harsh. It's sibilant. And I would be lying to you guys if I didn't say that. That said, if you couple it with a mic preamp... That is more on the dark slash muddy side. It does sound better. On the Audi 9014, it doesn't sound that good. It sounds way too harsh and bright. It just does. Okay, so original capsule design, custom built transformer, and class A circuit topologies. So, I mean, that doesn't really say much other than the gain stage is clear because it's class A. You know, it's not going to have your typical class AB or even worse. I don't know if there's any class D microphones out there, but, you know, it does have less distortion than the other microphones because of that. Although the SE2200 is cardioid only, there are two gold sputter diaphragms that are used to ensure best quality acoustic performance. I don't know why. I mean, is there a reason for that? Yeah, I really don't know. I don't know why they would put two capsules in. 
I mean, I know that there are microphones that have that, but they have multi-patterns, and the SE2200 has one pattern. They avoid using integrated circuits and instead use discrete components. Okay? I won't debate that. I didn't open it up, but I'm not going to... I wouldn't think that they would put this picture up here, and then if you unscrewed it, you'd see something different, you know? Oh, I forgot to mention that earlier. Yeah, so it does have low-cut filters, a.k.a. high-pass filters, and also attenuation. So those are good to have, especially if, you know, you're doing live sound or something. They're built right into the mic. And I would agree with this where it says it provides depth and weight to the overall sonic image. That's one thing I can say is that it does sound big. It sounds up front. And that's great qualities for any microphone, really, for especially vocals. And yes, this all-metal housing and premium finish. So that's one thing I really liked about it is that you don't see fingerprints. And it definitely felt very nice in hand. And gold-plated XLR connector. You know, it's nice to have. It's better to have gold-plated than not gold-plated. See, here's the bump I was telling you about. So it's right, starting right after about, it looks like it actually starts right in the sibilance range. So right at three kilohertz, it's about, I would estimate two to three decibels, it looks like. And then it really goes up right around, what is that? Nine kilohertz. So that's where it starts rising up and then it falls back down. I'm not sure what this number is right here, but, you know, it definitely is a bright microphone. All right, let's see what people have to say. I love the SE2200. It's an absolute workhorse. We use it in our band's studio, and we take it on tour. It can handle being chucked in my backpack, which is what we need on the road. Great bang for your buck, and I love having the freedom of plug-and-play immediately. As long as you have a Phantom Power interface. Yes. It delivers a high-resolution, open, complete, and slightly modern frequency response in the broad sweet spot and a functional equipment for really very little money. It's amazing how big and noble a microphone can sound for this price. You know, the Audio-Technica AT4040 had that similar sound, so I, you know, I wouldn't really say the SE2200 stands out for that alone. Credit where it's due, it does sound nice, so... You can get better quality if you pay 10 times the price, but the difference is less than you might expect. Uh, that, that's from 2003. A lot of microphones have been released since then. But, well, you'll hear what I had to say in a few, few minutes. I've heard this back-to-back -back with a U87, and it's damn close. The fact that this mic is $299 is an absolute steal. We ended up using this mic ahead of several others that were far more expensive great buy all right yeah i agree with this i agree with basically everything they had to say right here final thoughts on the se 2200 i really 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 wanted to love it on vogels but the truth is when you couple it with the audient id14 preamps which do tend to be on the bright side the mic just doesn't sound that good. It sounds too harsh. It does have a nice upfront quality to it. However, it's just too harsh. Now, yes, you can use a de -er and it takes care of that, but this is where I have to recommend using, I know it sounds weird, but a darker preamp, so a low-end preamp, and couple it with this microphone, and it'll sound good. I had a lot of trouble getting it to sound good. I ended up booming it over my head, like, like here, you know, like a good eight inches above, directed still at my mouth. Actually, no, it wasn't directed at my mouth. So it was directed towards the ground a few inches above my mouth. So, and that was without the pop screen, by the way. So when you add the pop screen, that does add high end to whatever you're recording. And that's why I simply can't recommend it for vocals if you're using certain preamps. Again, I, I wanted to love it on that. However... That being said, on other sources, I really liked it. I loved it on electric guitar. That, 
that's where if you're going for a clean electric guitar, it'll sound great there. It'll sound great for drum overheads. It'll sound great for drum room mic. I think basically anywhere there is percussion or where you want transients to really kick through, this mic is really good. But um, you got to be very careful with the way you use it if you're going to mic up vocals. So with all that being said, would I recommend this microphone? And my answer is yes, because I think that every home studio should have at least one cardioid large diaphragm condenser microphone. And this certainly would be a good first purchase. I think basically it's a better Audio-Technica AT4040, which I like that microphone, but it's way too harsh. I mean, it's just, it's, it's worse than the SE2200 when it comes to sibilance. So um, again, would I recommend it? Yes, I think it's a nice looking microphone. It comes with the pop filter, the shock mount, it's got a classic look to it and you can capture a bunch of different sources with it. So yeah, I, I definitely think it's worth the money. Also the attenuation, you uh, on the AT4040, there's only a, a 10 decibel pad. On this, there's a negative 20 decibel pad so you can use it in front of a kick drum mic if you so desire. Good job, SE Electronics. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.